Okay, this is a video where I've made the long journey to Mars and I've already finished all the mid-course corrections and I'm basically getting ready to finalize the journey I use. You can see I've got Mars right out the window. I'm only uh, just a very short way away from actually getting into orbit around Mars. What I'm wanting to do here what I've already done a couple times, I've practiced this already, is I'm wanting to use the atmosphere of Mars itself to act as a brake so that I don't have to use any fuel to uh, get myself into orbit, to get myself into a, a parking orbit around Mars. As you can see, I've used up quite a bit of my fuel, most of it already, just uh, you know, on the launch and on the various mid-course corrections getting here, um, the vast majority of the fuel was used on launch. So, I've basically already got everything set up at this point. This is a save file I've just opened up and I've already di got everything kind of dialed in where I want it. I've got myself coming into the atmosphere of Mars with a minimum altitude of 26, call it 27 kilometers. You can see that here. And the uh, orbit MFD pretty well agrees with that number. These don't always match up when you're, for, when you're not in an actual orbit. Orbit MFD tends to, uh, it doesn't take as many things into consideration as TransX does, so sometimes these don't always match up. And I'm looking here at the hole temperature I'm definitely going to have to pay attention to that as I get into the atmosphere, but having already done a couple practice runs, I know the whole temperature isn't going to be much of a problem. So I'm going to switch over to the attitude hold, and I'm not going to engage it, but I'm going to set it to, uh, I think about 35 should do it. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and warp ahead time here a little bit. You can see it's at warp 100. And I'm just kind of closing the final distance, getting myself to Mars, take it out to 1,000. And I'm watching everything, watching my minimum altitude. It's kind of changing as I get closer. That that always happens. There are, just, there are a lot of variables to take into consideration. And this just updates as I'm getting closer. That's one of the moons of Mars. You see my altitude is coming down. My time to uh, periapsis is getting closer. And here pretty soon, I'm going to come out of warp. Slow things down a little bit. A couple thousand seconds away from periapsis. And here we're going to make my, f I'm going to make my first arrow brake maneuver. F not sure if that's quite the right terminology, but... Okay, so we're 800 seconds away, 700. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to real time. Go to prograde real quick, just to get everything lined up. Go back to real time. Warp ahead a little bit, 600 seconds, 500, 400, 300. And I'm watching the altitude, okay. Now my altitude is getting to the point now where I need to be in position to do this arrow brake maneuver. So let me go to prograde real quick. Okay, and engage. Switch over to the surface HUD. And this is going to give me my angle of attack that I want. And I'll show you what this looks like from the external camera view. So basically, I'm coming into Mars like this, and this part of the vessel is going to basically pancake the atmosphere. You know, I've got not quite a 45 degree angle, and this is all going to, you know, the atmosphere of Mars is going to hit this part of the vessel, and it's going to create enough drag to actually slow me down. Because right now I'm traveling it. Let's bring up a surface MFD. 
traveling at 5,400 meters a second, and I'm actually speeding up at the moment because the gravity of Mars is pulling me in. But as I get into the atmosphere, into the denser atmosphere, it'll actually start uh, to slow me down. So here, I'm at 110 kilometers and getting uh, closer and closer to the surface, still speeding up a little bit. And that's what the external view looks like. And what we want to watch, what I want to watch, is right now, my orbital path has me doing this. Going in this circle, here's the periapsis, it's the lowest point of orbit. So it has me going close to Mars, and then flinging off out into space. And that's no good. I need to get into orbit. So what I'm looking for here is to have this green line close in around the planet. My eccentricity is currently 1.5. Anything greater than 1 is a non-orbit. So I need this to be less than 1. All right, let me pay attention here. What's going on? All APU temperature, auto no start. problem. Center of gravitation now we're getting down online. into the thick atmosphere, or thicker, and I should start slowing down here any second. Watching the uh, ground speed here. Yeah, it's starting to slow down slowly. As I get deeper and deeper, it'll slow down faster and faster. And I'm also watching the, the apoapsis, which currently is not available because I'm in a non-orbit. But as I, as the eccentricity closes down, it, this, this will become a number, and I want to watch to get it as low as I can. Well, I want to get it down to at least, you know, 400 kilometers or so, but that's not going to happen on the first pass. So I'm getting really into the thick atmosphere now. Speed's really starting to come down. And I think I'm actually going to need more pitch than this on this first pass. So I'm going to 45 degrees, or greater angle of attack, rather, I should Mach say. 26. You see the ground speed? This is all the atmosphere slowing me down. This is I have no engines running. And I'm about 20 seconds away from periapsis. You see the orbit 25. starting to tighten up. It's still flinging me out into space, so that's no good, but the eccentricity is almost below one at this point, so I almost have an actual orbit. Mach 24. I just crossed the point of periapsis, so now I'm captured. Without using any engines, I have a capture. My eccentricity is less than one. I've got a really a long orbit at this point. My apoapsis is all the way out to 50 million Mach meters, but 23. you can see it's closing quickly because the atmosphere is acting as a break. Here I am, I'm just, you know, pancaking the atmosphere. And the hull temperature is not a problem. I'm nice and cool. But now I'm really wanting to, really wanting to watch Mach these numbers 22. here. I don't want my periapsis to drop any lower than... You know, actually, I need to start changing my pitch now because I don't want it to get any lower. And you see the apoapsis is still dropping. It's still taking me way out beyond Mars, but that's okay. At least I've been captured. So I can continually do this maneuver using multiple passes. My periapsis is really starting to drop. I don't want that to go too low, so I need to lower my angle of attack. You can see when I lower the angle of attack, the periapsis is no longer dropping off so quickly. Mach 21. And I basically got all I'm going to get out of this pass. Uh, you can see my altitude starting to climb again, so I'm getting up into the thinner atmosphere, so I'm not going to get much more out of this pass. But the apoapsis is still dropping, and so is the periapsis, so let me lower the pitch even, or angle of attack even more. Once
once I get to 60, 70 kilometers, somewhere out in that range, I really won't get, um, you know, basically the pass is, for all intents and purposes, done at that point. I won't get much more out of this pass. I really wish my periapsis hadn't dropped so much. Uh, on my practice runs, I did a lot better. That's going to be a problem, actually. Because on the next pass, that has me going so deep into the atmosphere that I might actually burn up. I can fix that on the at the apoapsis by you doing a small burn and bringing up uh, bringing up the periapsis, but I'm going to try to not do that and just see what happens. Let's take a quick look at the outside. Okay, so this maneuver or this pass is basically done. I'm way up into the atmosphere at this point and Mars atmosphere is so thin that there's nothing else I'm going to get out of this run. So I'm going to turn off APU so I don't use any more of that fuel and turn off the uh, autopilots. So now something that's going to be interesting to note is how long does it take me to get out to Apoapsis considering the Apoapsis is all the way out to basically 9 million kilometers. So the date is currently September 4th, let's call it 4.30 a.m. And I'll just warp ahead to Apoapsis to see how long it takes to get there. Okay, so I'm basically at Apoapsis at this point, September 4th, 7 a.m. So that was about three hours to get around. That's not bad at all. On the, the first time I practiced this, my apoapsis was so far out, it took like 14 hours to get out there. So it's only going to take me approximately, I assume, three hours to get back to uh, periapsis. So September 4th, 7, 10 a.m. Let's warp ahead to periapsis. But I got to be careful because I don't want to crash into the planet. Okay. So we're at 9.47 a.m., so that's two and a half hours. And I'm about a thousand seconds away from periapsis, and my altitude is 1.1 million kilometers. So I can definitely bring that down a bit more. 800 kilometers, 700, 600, 500. All right, let's see what happens on this run. I'm a little worried about this run actually because I'm so my periapsis is so shallow or maybe deep is the better word it's taking me way down into the atmosphere so basically I think I think I might actually burn up on this pass but I'm curious to find out <laughs> 